All right, this is number six from uh, the 2009 BC calculus exam, and uh, it's a serious question, so I'm guessing most people who read it just didn't even try, um, but we're going to make sure that we uh, get it all done. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is they give you the series for e to the x. You're supposed to know the series for e to the x, sine of x, cosine of x, 1 over 1 minus x. Sometimes they give it to you, sometimes they don't. Um, all right, so the first thing uh, that I want you to know is Part A asks you to write uh, a series centered at x equals 1 for some weird thing, uh, e to the quantity x minus 1 squared. Um, it's been my experience that on the AP exam, shifting the center just kind of takes care of itself. Um, we'll see what that means uh, in this actual problem. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to write out the series for e to the u because we're making a substitution, a u substitution. Um, and it's just helpful if you think of it this way instead of uh, in terms of x. Uh, now replace every u that you see with the quantity x minus 1 squared. And when you look at the series that you're ending up with, you can see that it's the quantity x minus 1 all over the place. That means that the center is at 1, um, which is what we were supposed to get in this particular problem. Um, and that's it. Uh, there, there was like nothing to be done in this problem other than to uh, write down the series for e and then uh, replace everything with uh, the quantity x minus 1 squared. So the center just worked out. We didn't have to really worry about that, even though it seemed like it might be worrisome. Um, in part b, we're going to use the uh, series that we got in part a um, and write the uh, first four non-zero terms in general term um, for f about x equals 1. So um, f of x is this crazy thing that they've uh, defined. Um, so it's e to the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 1 all over x minus 1 squared when x isn't equal to 1. And then f of 1 is 1. Um, that's just making it continuous. Um, so what I want to do is um, just really replace that uh, e to the quantity x minus 1 squared with the series from above that we found in part A. Um, and you'll notice something kind of neat happens here. Um, the problem's designed this way. So, uh, you know, fill it in to a couple terms. Um, then we have the minus 1, so that's a numerator of f of x. And then all over the quantity x minus 1 squared. So what's going to happen is the, um, the 1 from the series and the minus 1 in the numerator are going to cancel out, um, leaving us just with all of this stuff. So we write it out again. Um, now, it, it might make you do series problems a little more slowly, but I do recommend that you just keep writing out the terms because sometimes uh, it's a little clearer what's going on if you do that. Um, now, if you notice, everything has at least an x minus 1 to the second, which means we can cancel all of them. Um, so the x minus 1 to the second cancels to leave us with 1. x minus 1 to the fourth divided by x minus 1 to the second leaves us x squared. Uh, x minus 1 squared, um, and so on. Um, and then finally we get to that general term, which, um, you know, by properties of exponents, we end up with the quantity x minus 1 to the 2n minus 2, because you subtract the exponents, and then over n factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. So that's the series we're going to end up with. Um, moving on to the next part, we need to use the ratio test. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just writing out the nth term of that series that we have. Um, you need to know the ratio test, uh, because the ratio test is what, that's a primary weapon you're going to use to determine intervals of convergence, um, and ra uh, radius of convergence. So, we know it's the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n, or um, a sub n plus 1, so let me do that. Um, and what happened there was, we have 2 times the quantity n plus 1 minus 2, so that's 2n plus 2 minus 2. So we just end up with x minus 1 to the 2n. So that's a sub n plus 1. And then I'm um, supposed to divide by a sub n. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n, which is uh, the same thing as dividing by it. Um, and this saves you a little bit of work. Not, not a lot of work. but um, So we end up with a new limit. So we're going to cancel things. Uh, the ratio test is kind of fun if you're into algebra, which, I mean, if you're taking this class, you probably didn't hate algebra. Because um, you get to cancel all kinds of things, factorials, stuff of that nature. Um, so we end up with this. I've dropped the absolute value at this point because n is positive. It's going to infinity. 
And the quantity x minus 1 squared is always positive, so it's okay to drop the absolute values there. Um, now, if n goes to infinity, uh, this limit equals 0 no matter what, which is always less than 1. And that's kind of an ideal situation, because that means that uh, the series just converges for all x. Um, and then the question was uh, the interval of convergence. So, I mean, the interval is the real number line, I guess. Um, all right, moving on to the next question. Uh, we need to uh, determine points of inflection. Um, so what's going to happen here is I'm just copying again um, my series from part uh, B because I need to use it. And what I think this question is really doing, it's testing your ability to take derivatives term by term. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. So the derivative 1 was 0, and now I'm using the power rule. Um, and I guess the chain rule as I go through, um, so you can see. Uh, don't get bogged down with uh, simplifying all of those coefficients. Probably not worth your time. Um, okay, so that's first derivative, but I need the second derivative. And I'm just hoping that something good happens here so that I can make a, a really quick determination as to whether or not we have any points of inflection. And if you notice, something good does happen. So what happens is that um, this is a, a positive function. F, F double prime is always greater than or equal to zero. Um, if you need to think about it, think about it this way. Um, all of the exponents are uh, even, so we're always uh, squaring or to the fourth or, or so on. And we start at one and we're just adding things. So it's never going to be less than zero, it's never going to be equal to zero. Uh, which means that uh, we can't have any points of inflection uh, because the function itself is concave up for all x. And uh, therefore, there are no points of inflection. And uh, that's this problem. It's a series problem, so it takes a little bit longer to explain, but it's uh, one you shouldn't be afraid to do. And I hope this was helpful, and good luck.